Hey you folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to the long-awaited Let's Play of Cities Skyline. Cities Skyline, of course, is a city-building game. It is going to be very similar to things like SimCities and Cities XL. However, it is a completely different game by a completely different company. It is uh, developed by Colossal Order, a company that's actually out of Finland, and published by Paradox Interactive, a company that uh, I tend to like their work quite a bit. Uh, very excited for this one. This is a pre-release copy. I'm playing this game about 10 days before the actual release of the game. Uh, so, disclaimer, something might change between now and then. Uh, it's also no, not technically a review because it is a pre-release copy of the game, uh, so I can't tell you outright, you know, if I like the game or not, but I've got 22 hours of, into the game so far, and when I go to sleep at night, all I can think about is playing a little bit more City Skyline, so, uh, you know, enough said. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into the game. We'll take a quick look at some of the menus here. Again, some of the things need a little bit of uh, a little bit of love, maybe, before release. They've specifically talked about some of these tools, but we've got a map editor, an asset editor. I'm not going to go into those today, but they're there, which is really exciting. There's a content manager here, integrated into the Steam Workshop. Tons of uh, new maps. You can also share uh, save games with uh, other people. Um, other assets, which I don't think I've got any loaded right now. There are some mods that come with the game. Uh, hard mode, and I gotta say, starting out, the game's gonna be hard enough already. It's also worth noting there's an unlimited money mod and an unlock all mod. These are shipping with, uh, with the game from day one, so, um... If you want to be able to just build whatever you want to build, just uh, unlock both of these and then go nuts. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be playing it in sort of a normalish kind of a difficulty right over here. A um, few options, change some resolutions, uh, the graphics quality here. Most things are on. The color correction is kind of neat because you can make just the sort of the game look a little bit different overall. I'm going to leave it on normal. I think I've got everything kind of maxed up. The tilt shift amount um, means that when you're sort of zoomed in in the city, there's, some bits will be a little bit blurred. I think I've put it down a little bit from the default um, just because I like that. Anyway, tons and tons of keybinds that you can rebind. A very, very nice set of functions over there. Um, English, reset unique building unlocks. Cool stuff. Uh, reset configuration is really nice, and yeah, you can integrate this to your Paradox account as well. Let's go ahead and start a new game. I do have a few other videos that have already been published on the channel, including an overview of one of my existing cities, if you want to see something that's a little bit more complete, plus a guide on how to run the roads and different things like that. So, the game is going to ship with a handful of maps. I've got nine here. I don't know if that'll be exactly the same that uh, you will get. Uh, I've been playing, uh, I played a little on Green Plains and River Run, so I kind of want to try something different. It is worth noting that depending on exactly what map you choose, there'll be a different tone to the grass and the tree. I think there's four overall um, uh, sort of color schemes for the landscape, something that looks a little bit more northern, something that looks a little bit more sunny, and then maybe something that's a bit in between. Um, so I think if you look at, yeah, like Sandy Beach over here is going to be a little bit more dry and arid, for example. I don't know which one we want to try. Let's Lagoon Shore. I like this screenshot. Maybe we'll try Lagoon Shore. I don't actually know which one I clicked on. Apparently I double-clicked. You'll notice there were also some stats down at the bottom to tell you how much sort of um, space you'll have to work with, as well as outside connections. However, that only applies to your starting rectangle. Let me go ahead and pause the game right away. Um, although, with nothing happening, I don't think we would... I don't think anything would happen. I don't think we'd get any stats. I don't think we'd be spending any money, so I guess I don't need to pause or unpause. We get a little hello warning over here. Hello warning. Hello message. I'm warning you. Hello. And uh, we can pan around. So, WASD, we can move around like this. Now, this is the area we have to work in to start off with. It is worth noting that this amount of space is effectively the same amount of space that we uh, had in the new SimCity game. However, in this game, because you don't have like massive ore mines that you have to build or anything like that, you you have a lot more space to work with. Also, a lot of the buildings tend to be a little smaller. But what's especially notable is you can actually upgrade this square here you can eventually get nine of these connected in any kind of direction. I can make like kind of a straight line. Well, I think you can only go like five wide or something like that, but you get an area that is in, in the end nine times bigger than SimCity. And uh, so far with 22 hours in, the best I've done is maybe like effectively fill up about four squares or something like that in, in a city. It takes a long time. There's a lot of content. It's feeling pretty good that way. So no worries. Again, most of the things at the start here are locked because we are not playing with the mod that unlocks everything. So we're being prompted to build a road to start off with. Literally, the only thing we can do to start off with here is to build a normal two lane road. Now, what I'm going to do is actually build that right here. This is my highway that comes in and out of the town. I'm just going to connect. This is the in way and the out way. Um, it's worth noting on the screen where I was able to choose my map, there was the option to have people drive on the left side of the road instead of the right side of the road. Um, so depending on where you're from or what you're trying to do, if you're trying to make a little English town, then maybe you want to flip that around. I haven't actually played with that feature yet, but there we go. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and connect these two right there. 
And by doing that right away, it unlocks uh, the ability to start zoning and the ability to build different kind of roads. So I want to do that. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and build some one ways. Um, it is important to not over engineer your city at the start because it's really easy to overspend and then sort of kind of run out of money. But um, I really like extending these. These are one ways over here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the one on the right this way and then drag back on the left and sort of connect those up to the highway over there. You'll know, These are actual highway connections uh, right over here. These will unlock a little bit later, and that's exactly the sort of road that this is. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just drag this out. I've got the straight line tool put out there. I'll go ahead and extend it one, two, three, four blocks. This seems pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is build on the way back here. I'm going to stop this construction, and what I'm going to do is line up right over here and build down that way for the returning one way. And that's, I like that quite a bit. So, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to extend some roads out here, just start a little further down, and what kind of, like, connections I want here. Do I want one, more one-ways? It might be a good idea. Right now, it'd be a little bit overkill. But it might be a good idea to do something like, okay, if this is going counterclockwise, right? Because you can go up, and if you go here, and then say a one-way that way. So left turn one way, so you can loop around counterclockwise. So let's try to make an outer ring that maybe goes kind of clockwise-ish, which would mean from here we can go there. These guides here show you, um, uh, well, for here it doesn't matter too much. This is if I, I did a road like this and then came down that way. You can see that it's exactly the right um, width to have like zero overlap in my zonable abilities. That's, this grid here shows where we can zone our residential, industrial, commercial, all that sort of stuff. Um, do I wanna run a road that goes this way or not? Also, should we hit a nice curved road? I think that's what we're going to do actually. And we're lined up nicely that way. So I think I'm gonna have the one way that goes down here. And then I'm gonna switch to the curved road tool. So I'm gonna line it up to this grid mark here and then drag it to here. And we'll add a nice little circle. And I'm digging that. Now, right now, this is a two-way road. I think we'll end up changing that. But for now, I'm going to continue the sort of clockwise one way, like that, and then pull it all the way up to here. Oops, I'm on a curved. I want the straight tool, like this, and then let people kind of connect up that way. There we go. Uh, is that going to make any sense? Not where this connection is. Um, hang on. So let's bulldoze this because this connection should go that way. But then what it can do is do sort of uh, the anti-clockwise that way. So that way there's a few different ways for traffic to flow around, which is good. And then here, do I want a two-way? Yeah, I think I'll need it. I'm a little worried about a bottleneck here, but we'll deal with that a little bit later. Anyway, let's start the zoning. First thing we do need are places for people to live. So I might zone this whole area as, um, as residential. Tell you what, I'm going to go and put some commercial buildings in the middle. Um, and then... Let's do that. And then I think I'll residential the rest. One of the easiest ways to do it is to switch to the marquee tool over here instead of the fill tool. And you can paint individual little squares. There we go. One one square of, 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 of residential here. I think technically someone can build a house there. And you can end up with these like like convoluted zoning. I, I don't think that's actually useful. You can also right click to just uh, erase that completely. Uh, the paint bucket tool is very useful. The big circle is also really useful to sort of paint down bigger areas of the zone, right? Like that. But I'm quite keen on using the marquee tool, which just lets you drag a square. Now, it's aligned to the camera by default, but if you start in one of the squares and then drag out, it'll be aligned to the way the squares are. It's like really well done little tool. These are little things that I haven't really seen before. So I'm going to do that. Um, depending on how I laid down the roads, I could have, you know, tweaked some of the zoning. But that'll be fine. These will fill with slightly smaller houses, and I'm going to be quite happy with that. Did I? Is there really not? Hmm, there's not a zonable terrain there. Hmm, that's okay. Not a big deal. Um, so we're going to have that. People are going to start coming into the town now, and they will very quickly start to complain about the fact that there is no power. So I think uh, setting up a windmill early on is probably okay. We could also go directly into a coal power plant, though. We've got a, a choice um, there. Now, if I go to the windmill mode, you can see everywhere where that's dark is more windy. So 7 megawatts here. Over here, I think we got 8 because it's slightly elevated. If we go down here, it's only 6. So ideally, you build the windmills in darker areas so you produce more power. The big circle... Um, with the, the headphone icon, this represents the noise pollution. So if I were to build the windmill right here, all these houses would complain that the windmill is loud and making noise. But if I build it way over here, then I don't have to worry about that. And that might be... Maybe we'll go and do that. 
We could start right with the coal power plant. Uh, if we take a look, the coal power plant will make 40 megawatts, and the upkeep is 560. Oh, I can't math this. This one here will make 0 to 8, so ideally 8 for 80. So that's 10 bucks per megawatt. This is more than $10 per megawatt. So the wind turbine is actually cheaper as a maintenance thing. It ends up using a lot more space, though, because each one only produces so much. I'm going to try to put it right on the edge of the water here like that. Now, the blue area around the building, this represents where power can reach without any cables. And you can see more appearing over here. There's no power here, but if I want power to reach from one to the other, all I have to do is start a power line somewhere in the bluish area and drag it to another bluish area, and that will connect the power between those. So you don't need any power lines for most of your buildings. They're sort of, you know, I don't know, underground cables or something that are running there. But for long distances like this with big space, you have to run your big, um, what are these things called? Power, like they're pylons? Just says power lines, but yeah, you know, high voltage power lines. So we should start to get power over here, assuming we're producing enough. Right now we're producing zero. Why is that? I'm paused. That would explain it. There we go. Now it's starting to kick in. Now there is in this build, and uh, we noticed this uh, at the PDX con uh, trial. If you build right on the edge of the map, like I did here, I can't click on this building. Um, which is a little bit of a glitch. If I put down another one of these, and I may as well, what the heck. If I put it down, say, here, also producing 8 megawatts, and then get out of this mode, I can select this one. I can't select this one because it's actually too close to the edge of the map. So there's a slight glitch there. But I think the power lines, the, 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 the wind turbines look great. Also, you can sort of zoom in. There's, like, actual writing on the top. Look at that, wind star. What a nice little detail. I don't know. I like that about games like this. We're also going to want some water, so let's go right ahead and set up a, um, a water pumping station. We're going to need a sewage outflow soon, too, though. We've got water over here and water over here. Maybe I'll... I'll hmm. Because the problem is you can't... You don't want to dump sewage back where you're grabbing the water. I want to keep this lake pretty. And we'll dump the sewage, like, out into the ocean. So this is where we'll collect our water from. I'll just go ahead and grab that there. Now, it will need some power, so again, I'm just going to take this whoops, this power line and extend it over to here. And then we're going to need water pipes, so we're quite far from our town. But the blue area around here is the area that will be served by this water pipe. So I'm actually just going to stretch it out to something like this, and then I can come out down uh, a little more here. Actually, even a little further. I'll do something like that. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then one more that comes out... A little further than that. Just trying to minimize the overlap to save some money. There we are. And like so, we can check our stats. We've got electricity. We've got, uh, we're using 2 megawatts. We're, we know we're producing, what, like 16? Well, that'll kick up pretty fast as soon as the water, uh, the, the people move in. We've got lots of water now, which is great. I could go into my budget, actually, and just drop my water and hydro budgets. Now, I'm spending half as much as normal on this, but I think we're only getting about a quarter of the power, like 25% of the power. So uh, it's not very efficient to do this. Right? Just like if I boost it up to 150, I'm spending 50% more, but I think I'd only get 25% more power. So we'll keep it all the way down to save a few bucks. Get that going. We are starting to complain about sewers. And again, I don't want to dupe, dump the sewage there. So this is going to be a little bit expensive with the layout I've got. But we're going to dump sewage over here. Now, it unfortunately means a very long water pipe. Now, the water pipes are the same. Each water pipe you build use, is used for both the sewage and regular water. Well, when you can think of it in terms of when you're laying down the pipe, you're actually laying down a pair of them. But then we're also going to need power over there. So I will go ahead and connect up from, say, here and bring it out to there. Later on, we'll be getting rid of all these power lines as we just sort of build in that area. So we're going to try to get the sewage out of the homes. There we go. All that negative stuff is going away, which is really good. Now, the thing will come up is people need jobs. They need industry. People can work in commercial places. We can see here the neighborhood shop hires, employs six workers, which is great. But that's not going to be quite enough. Now start off with we do have the industrial zone now there actually are a few different flavors of zones that you can get later when you unlock regions for now it's mostly going to be kind of generic -y, uh polluty kind of polluty kind of uh, industry this area here though if we go oh the map modes aren't actually unlocked the natural resource map mode i was curious to what's over here it's already looking kind of blah so you know what why don't we go and extend out so this is a one way going this way and that goes that way let's do this we're going to extend this one way out quite a bit over here and then I think this is where we line up for this yeah it's a little crooked no one minds right 
A little bit of unhappiness when you do bulldoze the buildings. But let's go and make this relatively industrial. Now, industrial areas do pollute. They're also quite noisy, so you don't want them too close to your residential areas. You can provide a bit of a buffer with trees and parks, though. Now, we'll need to make sure they've got water. So let's go ahead and just bring that down that way. And I'm intentionally going to leave a space between here, just so that the pollution doesn't uh, add up too much. And I can fill it with trees later on. You can see that based on the map we're on, we're getting lots of palm trees. Which is different. Some of the maps may be the ones that are further north will get you lots of evergreens. And I think the other one has just a lot of like deciduous trees, like the normal leafy kind of trees, for example. And this tree is starting to kick in. Um, it actually might have a bit of a power problem until it grows to, to reach here. And I just realized we actually have a bit of a gap that we're leaving in. So I'm actually explicitly going to make sure that we've got power hitting this zone. That way we don't have too much of an issue. So this is the RCI, RCI bar to show you the demand of various things. We have a high demand for industry or offices. Later on, you'll be able to build these offices here that basically work like industry in that they provide lots of jobs, but they actually pollute a lot less. You do require a lot more educated people. If we check this here, this garments industry, it will hire 16 workers and it just needs them to be uneducated. We don't need any schools whatsoever to maximize this industry over here. And yes, we can rename everything. I can call this um, Quilly Teen uh, swag, uh, factory. This is where we make this, the Quillateen branded t-shirts and mugs and things like that happen right there. What else do we have? Ready to wear limited, garments limited, garments limited, box factory. Ooh, yay, boxes. Garments, ready to wear, goods unlimited. So these will have different, ooh, Frank's fish sticks, yum. Uh, these names will change depending on what kind of industry is running an area and what, what level they are. Right now, it's just uneducated workers that are building boxes and, you know, putting together a little bit of clothing. And we have a bit of a loop here. Now, there's a bit of an issue with the traffic in that if someone is, say, here and wants to go here with a car, they actually have to make the big loop all the way around. So we're going to want to make some other roads in there at some point. Um, but people can also walk. And if we zoom in, it might be a little early yet. Oh, here's some people walking around, for example. Uh, Willow Green lives at the Valley Residence, which is here. That's Willow's uh, place of residence. And is going to the neighborhood shop here and works at ready to wear limited over here now this is unlike sim city the the sim city 5 or sim city 2013 whatever you call it call it uh these people do persist in the game in fact we can we can rename this person if we want we can call this person quill 18 this is quill 18 and as long as the house what house was it yeah we'll have to wait until uh quill 18 comes out of the shop that's not me that's not me Currently, there's no ability to find someone after you've named them, which is too bad. I really hope that they add some sort of feature that lets you just do a quick little search. So you can find someone after you've named them. Is that me? Nope. I might still be shopping, actually. I don't think it'll tell me a list of who's in the shop. But um, as long as that house stays there... I think, was, the, was it the Valley Residence? Oh, here's the Willow Residence. might be there. Um, as long as uh, uh, the house stays there, people will continue to live in the city. If their industry changes, then they will have to find a new job. Otherwise, they will keep working at sort of the same job and keep that all going. Um, this place really has no power? Or are we out of power? Oh, yes, our consumption exceeds our available electricity. So we're going to go back to the budget and bring this back to uh, 100, which is your peak efficiency. I'm going to do the same thing with the water. There we are. Uh, we're no longer losing money. We're actually making money already, which is good. However, soon as uh, the city will grow, we'll reach the next milestone, which we can check. Oops, not that button. This button right over here. So uh, once we reach a population of 460, we'll, is it we will become a little hamlet or we are a little hamlet? We will become a little hamlet. So once we hit 460 people, it will unlock the ability to manipulate taxes, to take out loans. It'll also unlock the services of garbage, healthcare, and education. And right now, there's no demand for those things. But... As soon as we unlock it, then people will want to, you know, they're going to want some sort of garbage dump to get rid of their stuff. So let's go ahead and be a little bit preemptive over here. Um, I'm going to maybe get rid of, uh, not not use one ways anymore over here. The traffic should actually be relatively low. Uh, we'll do sort of a loop around like this and like that. And maybe what we'll do is we'll put a two-way road right in here as well. So people can uh, go through the block in a few different ways. We can even go and uh, zone that as more industrial over here. And we might end up with more industrial over here, but I'm planning on building my garbage dumping thing over here. Keep it nice, far out of the way of my city. 
There we go. More and more houses are coming in. Population is continuing to decrease because people are happy. People are coming to the town. They're about to breach Hamlet. We just need one more tick. There we go. Hey, we're the Hamlet. For the next milestone, the Worthy Village will need 900 people. And that will also allow us to purchase our first expansion area, which is going to be pretty early. We still have lots of room to work in, as is. Um, so, garbage. So now garbage is going to start to accumulate in the house. We look at our stats over here and we click on... Uh, that's pollution. Garbage is over here. Uh, and we, we look, we can see some colors kicking in. So this one here is turning a bit brown because I think it's got a bit of garbage accumulating. I don't think we've got a way to just click and see how much is there. But once garbage reaches a certain critical mass, then we'll get a little pop-up above uh, the, the buildings that will tell us that this is becoming a problem. So let's go ahead and start with a garbage dump, a landfill site. This will eventually fill up with garbage, and then we'll have to keep building more and more landfill sites. Later on, we'll be able to build incineration plants. We do need a population of 7,500 before we can do that. But this will start to burn garbage. Not just burn it, it'll actually turn it into electricity, which I think is a sign that this uh, game was made by some, uh, you know, Finns and Swedes and things like that, because if I recall correctly, Finland actually imports garbage. Or no, not Finland. I think Sweden imports garbage to burn at its incinerators so it can generate power because it actually doesn't produce enough garbage by itself, which is pretty awesome. So we'll go ahead and middle the garbage dump right over here. You can see it's got a big area of pollution. This purple circle here is pollution that will hit from this garbage dump. Now, the industrial areas shouldn't be too concerned about this. Now, I'm hoping, do I have enough room for another one right next to it? Not like that, although if I turn it that way, then it'll fit in, which is good, because I think eventually I'm going to want to do that. We also need some health care. I'm going to go ahead and put down a clinic right away. Already, there's a little bit of health concerns, so I'm going to go on and put it um, maybe nice and central right over here. We do have to be a little conscious of these one ways. Um, I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to want it facing this road. That way it can leave here and go here and it has a choice if it's going to go north or south. And that should be a half decent place to put things. Everyone gets very happy because there's now a, uh, a medical clinic around. The other thing that we've unlocked are the schools. Now, I don't have to go and build the school right away. 160 bucks a week. We're, we're currently making a profit. We can certainly afford it. It will make people happier. It's got a student capacity of 300. We only have 150 potential students right now, but honestly, that's not too bad. And soon, some of our industries will want some educated people. So maybe I'll actually just put it on the opposite side of the road from the clinic, like that. And again, it'll make people very happy. I'll encourage people to move into the town. We've got the school here. And again, if we click on the book over here, we'll see the stats. Capacity is 300. We could go and save a few bucks by lowering our budget. But you know what? I think we'll be okay. I think the thing to do at this point will actually be to extend maybe our uh, residential areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with the one way here. Connect it out that way. And then go something like... Um, what do I want to do? Maybe I'll just go out one block like that. And then switch to the two-way street. Bring it out that way. Switch back to the one-way street. Oh, it's not quite lined up, is it? Ah, that's alright. Slightly crooked road. Ooh. Did I not go far enough? Bulldoze this. Uh, and actually, bulldoze a bit of a segment here. Yeah, it's just, um... I, I think I built the other road. I think I built this road slightly too long. Which is why I'm having to, to do that. We should also maybe get some more curved roads. But for now, I'm going to keep going with these two-way roads. Just stretch it out to here. And then, yeah, it's it's one unit longer than my guides. Which is fine. Here, it doesn't actually matter too terribly much. But as long as I'm aware of it. And I'm just going to paint down some more residential areas. We don't really have a huge demand for it. But it will get there. What I might do is just paint sort of this bottom area like that. Because there's a bit of commercial demand. So we'll go ahead and put some there. Maybe I'll commercialize this area over here. Commercial, I don't think, is quite as sensitive to pollution, although it's still not ideal. You don't usually need very much commercial. I'm going to go ahead and pump it up to speed 3. Actually, what I'm going to do is uh, put a cut in this video at this point. Um, the next video should be up basically immediately after this one. You shouldn't have to wait very long for it. Um, but I definitely at least have to make sure that all the uh, audio levels and everything are working okay. But I think our first sound, uh, town is coming along very well. We should actually rename our town over here. We're not going to be Springfield. We are going to be... Gosh, I don't know. Maybe something like Quillopolis for today. I mean, that's that's the standard way to uh, to name it, right? Always name your first town after yourself or your hometown or something like that. Right now, I'm I'm being very square and gritty, which we're gonna want to try to break out of soon. But for early times, it's gonna be leading to nice efficiency. The one thing I just realized that may have been a bit of an error is 
I'm not really going to be able to upgrade these roads and make them wider where the clinics and uh, elementary schools are right now because they're kind of in, in the way. If we check here, if I go to, say, the two-lane and I use the upgrade tool, you can see I could upgrade here. Um, oh, these are one-ways. That's the problem. Um, I could upgrade. That, that's not a one-way. Ah, maybe I had the wrong tool selected. See, I could I can imp increase the thickness here, and later on we'll upgrade. Uh, there we go. Here's a good example of a one-way, the triple. So I can upgrade these guys, but I can't upgrade here because the school's in the way, or that's the clinic. However, this game has something I've never, I don't think, seen in City Builder. Click on the building, there's a button to relocate the building. It costs you money. It'll cost me 2000 to relocate this clinic. But it means I don't have to bulldoze it and then rebuild it, which is awesome. Awesome, because the price of the clinic is 10000 so I'm saving 8,000 bucks by simply moving it instead. So in the future, we might move it aside a bit if we want to make these roads a little bit um, a little bit wider. But we actually might be relatively okay over here. I like seeing these trucks trying, you know, turn around and try to park and then service things. It's an oil truck that is fueling. Is this a gas station? Dino oil. Ah. So these oil trucks almost certainly, yep. See, they're leaving out of town. So these stations here, this one here needs oil. Most of these, the corner shop will need goods. And most of the stuff will come from out of town. Like these shops here might be getting serviced from my it's my swag factory, for example. Here, um, these produce goods, which will then get delivered to local commercial buildings, or if need be, they will leave town and then sell them elsewhere. Um, by having all that happen within the city, you're supposed to get more tax income. You're supposed to make more money if you know everything is kept indoors. Whereas if you're having to use a lot of um, a lot of importing. You may not make quite as much money as uh, as you would have wanted to. Apparently, we were mostly just exporting goods right now. Um, it'll be interesting to see what our natural resources look like a little bit later on. Oh, there we go. I think the purple shows the actual goods being exported. Interesting view. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you very much for watching this episode. And because it is the first episode of the series, it's doubly important if you can uh, comment and leave a like. And of course, if you uh, are new to the channel, first of all, welcome. And secondly, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss, uh, miss an episode of uh, City Skylines. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.